everyone, and my presentation is on VR addiction. Yes. Why is VR addiction an important issue? We're still learning about VR addiction. VR as we know it today is still very new. As designers and developers, we need to be aware of the pot potential factors so we can make socially responsible choices going forward in our chosen careers. There are many factors that could potentially contribute to VR addiction. A factor that could potentially cause VR addiction is the sense of reward. Video games provide psychological rewards. VR and video games accomplish this by providing experience points, bonuses, by increasing difficulties and levels, upgrades, and instant rewards. A repeated positive experience over time can lead to addiction. How rewards can lead to addiction is with dopamine. Dopamine is a neurotransmitter made in your brain that makes you feel good. It's used for memory, motivation, movement, mood, and attention. Causes uh, the anticipation of rewards, and the sense of accomplishment after completing a short task. VR games use many ways to produce dopamine. Fast music, role playing, violence, checkpoints, scoreboards, and near miss features. VR creates dopamine after repeated use. You will start to build a tolerance and that could lead to escalation of use to, to get the same feeling, which then could lead to addiction. Another factor to VR addiction is flow theory. Flow is a feeling of being immersed in an experience. There is a sweet spot between being incredibly stressed out and extremely bored. It creates a state of intense focus, attention and focus. People in flow experience time distortions and impair long-term goal planning functions. Games maintain flow by maintaining balance between challenges and abilities. Uh, positive emotional states, a uh, positive emotional tone or state over time, basically being in the zone. Another factor to VR addiction is spatial presence. The feeling of being there, fully immersed, basically plays illusion. Our brain doesn't know the difference between reality and the simulation, which could potentially be dangerous. This could be used for manipulation and influence people within the virtual space. Because the creator has complete control over what that person experiences. How the feeling of spatial presence is created, user tracking, stereotopic images, and a wide field of view. Stereoscopic images and a wide field of view. Spatial presence plays a major role in the VR experience. This is why VR could potentially be more addicting than traditional video games. Spatial presence is using two senses currently, sound and sight. But the Havoc suit will make VR even more immersive and potentially more addicting. Another factor to VR addiction is escapism. People are already living, sleeping, eating in VR. VR chat even implemented alarm clocks in their game. Avatar alternative identity is another factor. It can cause body or identity disassociation and sense of embodiment, which is only enhanced by real-time responses. Another factor of escapism is fantasy fulfillment. You can bend the world to your will, have everything you can imagine virtually, and VR also provides a bigger world. Another factor to VR addiction is self-esteem. VR games can provide people with a sense of value, usefulness, and community. Poor states of well-being and low self-esteem can lead to pathological gameplay and increase risk for addiction. Bimo from Adventure Time felt more confident when he was in his avatar body. He felt attractive, more useful, and valued by the virtual community. He did not want to leave the VR world. His friends had to break the system to get him to leave. Another factor to VR addiction is the social aspect. VR can be a cure for loneliness.
VR gives you a sense of community. You can find emotional connections within the VR space. Network, find friends, and even date. You can meet people internationally and visit the people who live far away. VR addiction cons, consequences. Uh, VR addiction. Consequences. VR causes uh, physical isolation from others. VR could cause you to neglect current relationship, uh, real world relationships. VR could cause you to avoid making new real world relationships and connections. VR could cause you to neglect real world responsibilities and health. And it could impair long term goal planning functions. Now, my now for my conclusion, uh, possible solutions. Uh, we could allow people to monitor unmanageable patterns of behavior. We could provide proper warnings and education on the dangers and provide safety precautions. We could create a way to make people more aware of the time passing. We could create game flow interruptions and time limits. And we could encourage responsible use. Now take your pointers and your opinion. Which factor do you think would contribute to VR addiction the most? And that concludes my presentation. Do you have any questions?